Finding the awakening within the fold of that graphic on our app. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Please forgive, we've had major technical problems, which is what's held things up. So please just, um, can you hear me everyone? Okay, fantastic. I do apologize everyone. Like I said, eight minutes late, I'm not particularly happy, but here we are. So you can all hear me. Okay, John, a bit quiet. I'm putting it a bit closer. Is that better, everyone? Is that better? Like I said, just have some technical problems. Okay, we're just still going on. So I just wanted to get started and say hi and greet you all and assure you that we're here. We're just waiting on a few. We're just getting a couple of things up and running. So just give me 30 more seconds, everyone. Okay, everyone, just about sorted now. Technical problems. I really thank you for the patience. We've just had some issues with things going weird on the formatting of slides and all that kind of stuff, which have now basically, by and large, been sorted. So I've spent a fair bit of time preparing this, getting it in top shape. Pretty excited to share with you. And like I said, I had a couple of challenges and which have basically held things up. But thank you very, very much for your patience. So I will be getting on the way now and sharing the basically the screen in about 10 seconds. Okay, so slideshow ready to go. Okay, fixed up now, ready to go. Okay, everyone, so what we're doing today and the reason for this is because of the number of people who've been asking me about sovereignty. So this is a really, today, it's a really good chance to basically go through and really learn some update stuff about sovereignty. All of you on this webinar, with the exception of one person, have pretty much been ongoing long-term clients and people who've worked with me at a fairly substantial, or substantial level and invested a bit. So this is really giving a lot more juicy stuff today to all of you. So one of the things I like to do with webinars is be pretty upfront with people so you know what you're in for, you get an idea of what you're going to learn, you get an idea of, because obviously the questions people ask is, is it purely educational, is it going to be selling me something, what's going to be happening? So I like to be pretty upfront with people, especially these days. So I'll tell you what you'll be learning first and foremost. So it's really just giving you a little bit more about sovereignty and about high taxes sucking and ruining our incentive to make wealth and how to do something about it. And the kind of things that the wealthy do, and it's gonna be a little bit structured, but a little bit organic too at the same time, because I have a heap of knowledge and, and information I've learned in underground movements and all kinds of places, and it tends to go on the spur of the moment. Now, when I do a structured webinar to new clients, it's normally entirely structured, but when I'm doing it to people who have been working with us for a while, I'm just going to be a little bit more ad lib. It's a bit like when you've got friends over your house. Like we've got Nathan on here, and of course Nathan was at my house a few months ago, and we watched um, Newcastle Knights win a rugby game. And you know, I don't drink alcohol, but Nathan got a beer with Alex Moore, the accountant. So 
you know, we've got people, we've got all kinds of different people on there. We've got Christine and Fiona and a few others who have been at their house. And yeah, so we've got a, a mixture of people here and generally who I've worked with quite significantly over the, over the years. Amanda, who I, you know, spent some time with last year and we worked on a whole lot of stuff with her. So yeah, so I'm going to be a bit more informal today. I'm going to give up, really share a lot more with you today. So you should have a bit of fun today. How long it will go for, I don't really know. It could end up going for, you know, at least 90 minutes. could end up going for two hours. So, because I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to really let loose and just share some really good stuff. How to protect your wealth legally. And a little bit more about the legal versus illegal tax avoidance and evasion. A little bit of starting the journey to financial freedom and sovereignty and what it really, really means. So, it's going to, so, this is going to be the idea of the webinar. So in terms of what's going to happen at this and what's going to be offered or not, it's not a sales webinar, like I've said, it's an educational. Now, what will happen at the end of the webinar, so you know, is that there will be no, there will be no no request to get money out of you or anything like that. So that again, I'll make up front with you. What there, what I will mention at the end is that there's going to be a part two of this webinar sometime in the, sometime next week, most likely, because I'm, I'm planning to share a fair bit. That also will be free. But what will be coming after that is an opportunity, but more for people who desire to learn about sovereignty, and that will be entirely optional. I have had a few people ask me about sovereignty and ongoing investment training and structure. We're going to be doing a, a really good sovereignty training program, and I'm just going to basically share more information, but I'll let people know before I start sharing, so if people want to get off um, and not hear about it, then you're perfectly entitled to so this way, everything's up front. You're going to walk away with significant, um, you know, knowledge and stuff which I know, and you're going to walk away basically without any further cost to what you pay today. So is everyone clear and everyone happy with what I've said? Like I said, because you've all worked with me for a while, I don't want anyone to feel messed around, and I want you to all know exactly how this is going to work. Okay, there's not much comments coming through. Okay, yeah, a couple coming through now. Like I said, just want to make sure people are hearing, happy with this. So I'll wait for a few more comments. Yeah, great, John. Yeah, hi, Darren. Great to see you here. And everyone was over last night, by the way, um, and was chatting to me quite a bit, actually, So and playing, um, playing, playing a bit of um, Kelly's Pool and all that, so... Amanda, always curious when you say underground movement. Yeah, look, you'll learn more about that. So today you'll hear a little bit more about that. So a bit more, a, bit, a little bit of fun as well. Look, Ron Paul, I don't know if many of you know him, but for those of you who don't know me, you're going to learn a little bit more about me today as well, just about how I think, because it'll help you understand a lot more about why, why WealthSafe does what it does. Because one of the reasons where someone asked me, how is it that WealthSafe is pretty much number one on almost everything with Google? And I said, well, Partly the fact that we do have good SEO, but a bigger reason is all the other accountants have gone running for their life because the government have clamped down on anyone. And I probably had, a, I've had three visits from the ATO over the last 15 years and one mentioned in, in, in Panama Papers. So that's the reality of what you deal with. As soon as you work in anything which is about helping people get free from slavery, you will become a target. The ABC told me in 2016, April, when the Panama Papers came out, they spent six months investigating me undercover. And they couldn't find a single thing on me. They actually said, you run a clean business. And the result of that was, was they ended up, um, you know, interviewing me and gave, gave a lot more publicity and worked really, really well. The ATO visited me three times, and each time it's all come out very cleanly. So the whole point is, is that, I'm a big believer in sovereignty and taking things on, and, but at the same time, I don't believe in being stupid either. And so, but I've been a freedom, what I call a sovereign freedom libertarian, really for a long, long time. Somebody who doesn't like high taxes, who argues at parties and barbecues about this issue with people, who worked for the ATO and used to disagree with his colleagues in the 10 years that I worked there, because fundamentally, I believe in, in the whole concept of capitalism and the rights of people to not only create wealth and for himself without having without governments forcing it out of their hands, but it's, it's not just that, but it's been proven time and time again in hundreds of years of, of, of economies to be the most effective model of running a society. 
And yet, basically, we don't learn from our history. Over and over again, the same things keep happening. And many of you know, but let's just say that you knew with almost 100% certainty or even 95% certainty what was going to happen to the markets. You'd probably say, my God, a crystal ball, I'd become a billionaire. Well, the truth is, if you actually understand history and understand markets and understand the last, not just you know, 10 years, but not even the last 100 years, but the last 2,000 years and the last 10,000 years even, you pretty much can know exactly what's going to happen. Because with 100% certainty, when certain things get done with governments, certain things happen. And it's virtually universal and without fail. So 99% certainty. So the fact that America will eventually collapse in its current form or change is absolutely certain. The fact that our economy will do the same. The fact that certain things are going to happen in the gold and silver market and it's going to happen in certain properties and everything else, it's inevitable. The, the learned ones, the, wealth, the wealthy know it. There's actually, for example, there was a book written about 120 years ago. Who's heard of the Book of Wealth that was written that was only originally given to the richest 120 families in the world. Who's heard of that? It's not, and the last 15 years has come out to the public because someone released it. No, well that book was specifically written to help the rich become richer and teaching the secrets of becoming billionaires. Yeah, and none of you have heard of it because very few have actually heard of that book. I've actually read the book. It's a very cumbersome read because it's quite complicated financial stuff, but the book basically maps through the history of the last 1,000 years of economies, of nations, of what's happened, what's, what's produced great wealth in countries, and given a formula to follow. And it was given to certain families, and they followed the formula, and they stayed billionaires and stayed wealthy for, for a long time. So the point is, there's formulas, there's systems, there's mathematics, and there's methodologies that do work. And the reality is that do you think that they want you to know? The answer is, of course, they don't want you to know. The, if, if you had a secret that you knew would, would basically make you extremely rich, there's nine, nine out of ten of you at the very least would not want to be sharing it with too many people. And the few of you who want to share it with everyone, once it came out, it probably wouldn't work as effectively. And I can remember some years ago, a guy that I knew, a colleague of mine, stumbled on a way to make a lot of money in e-minis. And he was doing very, very well. And he agreed to teach a small group of students. And a small group of students, all of them were doing very, very well. And then against his word, the guy who had basically gotten the students went and promoted him and got 100 new students. And of course, he said, well, I can't do this to 100 new students. And, but he ended up being pushed into it, and he did it. And all 100 students ended up losing money because, of course, as you can imagine what happened, now that, now that there were lots of people involved, their consciousness got involved, they, they started bending rules, and then, of course, the little competitive advantages disappeared. So the point is, I love the fact that, the, myself, I love the fact that the government, even though it's not great for people, I love the fact in terms of our business that the government are such absolute idiots in terms of in the Western world because it's given us a pretty much monopoly in the small business, the small investor market with WealthSafe Online because virtually no one else in Australia will do it right now. Now, in saying that, if the government changed everything and changed the laws and made it fair, it would be fantastic and no doubt I would have other stuff. The point is, it's always opportunity no matter what's going on. And especially when you're willing to be a contrarian and rock the boat and not follow the norm. So one of the best rules in life to be successful is look at whatever the masses are doing, as John Rockefeller once said, and do the opposite. So this is basically one of the first things I'll mention to you. And that's in every area of your life. Everything. The absolute opposite. And... For example, the masses believe in quick gain through speculation, as one example. The Book of Wealth actually says the best way to build wealth is proven, tried, tested methods by stable ways and then doing certain things over long periods of time that will give you big gains. So, for example, if you follow right processes, you are going to have moments when opportunities come up to make big gains if you're ready for it, as Warren Buffett showed, as Bill Gates showed. Bill Gates is a bit of interest for you, a bit of trivia, the reason Microsoft became top in the world was because everyone in the world got caught up with a new technology in the 1980s. Bill Gates decided not to go with it because it wasn't tested yet, and he invested a very small amount of the money of the company in that technology, whereas most other companies moved over to it. 
the technology failed quite dismally. So Gates ended up being the only one left pretty much with, with a huge um, company in, the, in, in what he was doing and, and basically took over the world until Apple eventually caught up again. But Apple were hit badly in the 80s because of that. So that's just an example. So Ron Paul, the congressman, for example, in the US, he was very, very um, anti, you know, um, what's called government, a strong libertarian. His son, Rand Paul, is heavily involved in, in, in politics. So the point is, the sovereign individual maps out a blueprint. And by the way, if you'd read that book in 1995 and followed that book, you would have become a millionaire through cryptocurrencies or even more, because they said cryptocurrencies would rise. And they predicted it would become mainstream. The truth is, will it become mainstream? I have absolutely no doubt that cryptocurrencies will become mainstream. I have no doubt that in the next five years from now, some one cryptocurrency, most likely Bitcoin, but certainly something, will become preeminent. And who and those who get in and who are involved early will do very well out of it. So the point is getting educated on investment and and on sovereignty and how to minimize tax and how to be smart is probably one of the best things that you can ever do and mastering this. I know one of the things that my partner loves about me is that I remember she, she noticed I haven't voted for 25, for about 20 odd years in elections. And she goes to me, don't you get voting fines? And I said, well, the first couple of times I got them, I said, but I just said, I then served a legal notice upon, upon them, basically showing them I exercised my rights under freedom of religion and my own beliefs to basically not, not, not vote. They said, yeah, how do you know about that? I said, well, it's in section 104 in the Election Act. So, in other words, I learnt my rights. I, in, the, in an underground movement, which means, by the way, underground just means under the radar, um, people who used to meet privately, I was taught a whole lot of stuff. I haven't done a census for like 20 years either. Same kind of deal, use, some, use my knowledge of things to do that. Managed to keep myself clean and running wealth safe while at the same time being a very creative tax planner for clients to help clients minimize their taxes as some of you have learned with working with me. I've done it with my own situation, 100% legally, while being very creative. So the point is, is that real sovereignty, more than anything, is about getting educated and understanding what sovereignty is and starting the process to get to become sovereign. And you'll be and if you think what the heck is sovereign, I like this word, you'll find out more shortly. I'll be giving you some definitions. So if you read what they're saying here, the biggest thing that you'll see is a very interesting thing I believe happening in days to come in, in countries. And the sovereign individual has written all this out and it's been happening bit by bit. A race to the bottom, high tax countries forced to reduce their taxes as business owners and investors become more willing to move. So you are going to find certain countries will be reducing their taxes who you'd never expect because they'll see the writing on the wall. Other countries will go the opposite. It's very interesting to watch America closely, what's happening right now there. You've got Donald Trump, who wants to reduce taxes. Then you've got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Democrat candidates like Cory Booker, who are openly talking about tax rates of 70 to 80%. And I'm serious. By the way, France did this. Um, Fran Francois Hollander, the president of France, um, some years ago, they had taxed at around 76%. So logically, what do you think happens when taxes go that high? Well, basically the same thing happens every time. The super rich leave the country, the wealthy pull their money out, and usually there's a revenue drop. Venezuela tried it. They were a prosperous country. They taxed their rich heavily. They started bringing in heavy taxes because, and the argument was, well, the middle class and the poor were clamoring, you know, we don't like rich people. Um, and of course, the government said, yeah, we agree. Let's take some of your money. And bingo, rich just go fine. Because keep in mind, if someone has got a lot of money behind them, and I and basically I said, you give me a hundred grand, I'll get you out of taxes, and you got, let's say you're making a two million dollar a year income, will you pay it? The answer is, of course you'll pay it. So for the wealthy, tax is always optional, and not on top of that, getting access to education is another thing, and getting access to investment opportunities. Certain things are available to, to wealthy people, for example. 
but not available to everyone else. Not just high, not just minimizing taxes, but the other thing is under securities laws, companies can't legally promote certain investment opportunities to you unless you meet what's called sophisticated investor requirements, which means you actually have a net worth of over 2.5 million or you have a $250,000 a year gross income minimum and it has to be certified by an accountant in writing on a certificate. Out of curiosity, who didn't know that? Who found that completely new? Just type in the text chat. Who has completely just learned something today? Yep, Fiona, Darren. Yep, that's one. Who else? Anyone else? All you have to do is click on the, on the chat button if you don't know how to do it and just type in there. And that's what you got if you don't know how to do that. Yep, John got into this one. Connor, I knew it from your previous webinars. Yep, Amanda, you know, knew that because of the property background. Yeah, correct. So you knew about it, Amanda. But yeah, a lot of people don't know this. So, for example, the sophisticated investor laws. If you study, if you actually look at investment returns worldwide, Australia don't have a, have a, don't, don't have a, don't have a very good record at all. They, Australian funds have a terrible record, and the reason for that is Australian funds reward, come, basically reward fund managers based on um, percent fees, not on performance. So you could be an awful fund manager. Something that I explained just recently to someone, I said, if you actually think about this through, who actually runs the world today? The answer is insurance companies, and I'll explain why. When doctors are giving you advice medically, what's their first thought? Insurance. I know for a fact, but I was told to have my gallbladder fall out, and the reason was insurance. They admitted that, that that was the main reason they changed the law. Previously, previously basically, they used to recommend a different type of surgery for gallbladders, which they changed because of insurance companies. I know for a fact that financial planners have, a, have an approved list of investments from the insurance companies who insure them. And they go outside that and are protected. So who really runs the world? So this is one of the reasons I personally chose to go more underground or go more to people who weren't caught up in what I, as I perceived as a system to learn and see things and do things differently. You'll find basically that the super rich and billionaires like Richard Branson, Donald Trump and all these guys they don't follow the norm in any way, shape, and form. And they certainly generally do that. And they and generally they certainly don't follow the mainstream. So and they certainly are not investing in the same kind of stuff that, that most people are investing in. They are getting access to things like venture capital and opportunities, which um, other people aren't getting into. So the sovereign individual could predict a complete collapse of a lot of the government systems, but it would be a desperate cash grab for governments, fast going bankrupt. So I personally don't have, uh, I've been predicting for a long time. And so far, I haven't liked the fact that I've been able to predict so accurately what's going to come. I predicted certain tax office crackdowns. I predicted certain other things. And my certain, the one big thing that I certainly have no doubt about and I said this many years ago, and now it's coming out from a lot of people, is the inevitability of a major economic crash and change of our system, and the introduction eventually of the cash system going out, going out completely, and seeing almost the cryptocurrency. Understand that historically, whenever this happens, and on average every 70 to 90 years, they reset the whole currency, and people who are relying on Western government cash and systems end up losing, like what happened in 1933 in the Great, after the Great Depression, they lost over, many people lost between 50 to 80% of their money overnight. So keep in mind that this is the kind of stuff that happens as countries get more and more into debt and as basically things start to break down and what you're seeing in Venezuela and people like that. Henry Ford said that the government and the whole thing would basically, people knew how the system worked, would basically overnight, would basically, he said there'd be riots in the street. So... 
there's many books coming out from billionaires now and from like Bill Bonner. Of course, his book reads Mons and Davidson. Um, Jim Rickards. Um, all guys who are very, very expert economists, highly regarded. Robert Kiyosaki. If you read his, some of his newer books, all of these guys are now talking about the inevitability of a major correction, but also talking about the opportunity that this is going to mean. The great thing is, when this kind of stuff happens, there is a huge opportunity to actually become wealthy and actually make a lot of money very quickly. So realizing that getting educated and preparing can, number one, not only save you from some fairly major disasters and falls, and the truth is, the reason I'm inviting you, existing clients, is that most people won't actually listen to what I've got to say on this. They won't take it seriously. Because when you look at the history of when these collapses happen, a minority of people take action. And that's like anything. Why do people, why are doctors basically very rich? Because people get sick because people do stupid things with their body. And people are generally doing stuff and sit on computers all day, work in office jobs, spending eight to 10 hours a day, hardly exercise and then eat like shit, excuse the French, and then kind of hope everything will work out okay and then get, and then get sick. And doctors know they'll do that. So chiropractors, doctors, physios and all that go beautiful and they make good money out of it because they know people do that kind of stuff. Governments know that most people, but by and large, are generally quite mentally lazy. They'll get jobs, they prefer someone else to basically pay them. Um, they all get contract business where they do all the work and basically not be afraid of risk, afraid of losing money, afraid of things going wrong. And, and so basically they know that. And they know that basically if they threaten you of, hey, you've got to pay your taxes, if you don't, we're going to do this to you, people go, oh, yikes, and they'll do it. So keep in mind that being sovereign is, a, is not just one thing it's a massive overall thing. It's a life-changing decision that you make. It's something that's about changing the way you think about everything in life. It's the way you think about your body and health. And I've noticed that the more I've learned about sovereignty with my health, the less money I spend on health. I, I for example, before this webinar today, this afternoon, I was going up and down the beach, going up difficult sands doing certain things I learned from a hiking guide and from a guy who walks mountains and that guy who's won major martial arts championships doing Mr. Miyagi stuff from Karate Kid. And I'm serious. I mean, I was hiking with him up mountains in the Daintree Rainforest last week, learning from other people like that. So the point is sovereignty. And actually, number one thing which is to get is it's the way you think about everything in life. Are you empowered within yourself? Are you the captain of your own ship? Or are you dependent on someone else for your knowledge? And by all means, do you need people to help you? Absolutely you do. I have, I've had really good mentors. I've invested extensively in to learn what I need to learn. I have good health providers who I see every now and again. But by and large, I trust myself. If I didn't, I wouldn't have a gallbladder. I'd be on workers' compensation to this day for having a long-term uncurable injury of chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and a and severe RSI and nervous system breakdown disorder all at the same time, which I was told in 2000 or 999 that I'd never recover from. Now, if I believed that from the doctors, well, guess what? I would have that. So it's taking my own sovereignty to change that. Financially, I would still be working in a job if I believed what everyone else had told me and convinced and, and, and have told me, like, you know, don't go into business or don't invest, don't go in this kind of thing, don't try this kind of thing. I was told by a number of mentors, you know, whatever you do, do not build a tax business where you're basically taking on the government. I was told this in 2006. I was virtually big by some mentors. They said, Warren, you're too controversial. You know, you need to tone it down. Just be more, be more mainstream, you know. You can become very wealthy by doing that. And finally, after two years, for about a year, I decided to take their advice and I was miserable. And eventually I realized that, no, I, I don't like that. And I'd rather, you know, go all out and if I get shut down then so be it but I'd rather help people and teach them about sovereignty and do it right here in Australia right in the heart of the beast I mean hey you know what a good story if nothing else and the point is is that is realizing that when you're in a western country uh, then basically you're always going to have more challenges but there's still ways to basically legally do things and in the case of some of you, you've taken my advice and, 
and teaching and have actually become completely sovereign and gone and get yourself a whole new tax residency and gone even further. So the internet, everything's changed the whole ability for you now to take more charge of your life and become more independent of governments and become more confident in dealing with them in all areas of your life so governments can't bully you. Guys like Trump are successful and became president because they can get criticized, they can have governments looking into him, investigating him, and he just gets on with his life and doesn't fall apart. You've got guys like Warren Buffett who, had, who got absolutely hammered by the Securities Commission in the investigations for years, and he just basically said that's part of life, Andrew Forrest. So the point is, is the biggest thing about sovereignty is once you lose your fear, there's an old saying in ancient martial arts, so when you lose your fear of death completely or being hurt, that's when you start being able to win. And it's the same with this. When you lose your fear of government and lose your fear of forces outside yourself and start to take control of, of yourself financially, your investments, and trust yourself completely and lose that fear of governments and what you can do and can't do, it's amazing. If I listened to governments, I would be doing mainstream tax advice. I would never talk about investments. There's many things I would not be doing. But the, but the reality is, is that being sovereign is all about speaking your truth and doing things like that. John, John put to you, your GP, average GP is a dinosaur. I've had chronic illness which doctors couldn't help at all. Treated myself um, with better results. Get your DNA sequence, folks. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, John. Couldn't agree with you more. I did the same. I've healed myself of numerous stuff. I shared recently, three months ago, I injured myself in the gym. I had a back injury that was not, not was pretty bad and a lot of pain. And now I'm basically climbing mountains and doing everything in, in the best shape I've felt in years, um, simply by ignoring what a lot of people told me, finding a few really good practitioners, doing my own research on health, doing my own... Um, training about the back, talking to all kinds of different people, including people like hikers in mountains, guys who'd won major championships who healed themselves from injuries and things like that, and how they did it. So the point is, I found people and I learned from people who'd been there, done that, and learned a whole lot of things. And the number one thing, for example, I learned around health and the body is to do the opposite of what most people were telling me. I went back to nature, went back to rather than doing flat road walking and doing normal gym stuff, although I'm doing that, doing a lot of things like climbing trees and mountains and that uneven surfaces. Aber I found these Aboriginal tribes have never had, that literally have no one with back pain, and that's one of the reasons. They run barefoot up rocks, they climb mountains, they lift stones all the time. They're always doing things with their body. They're not sitting down all day. They sit on rocks. They're used to it. So really, this sovereignty is a whole big thing. And like I said, I wouldn't share a lot of this kind of stuff um, as, as, as freely in, a, in normal ones, but I'm sharing with people who I'm assuming are a little bit more enlightened and a little bit more keen and, and pre about prevention and building a long-term foundation rather than getting a quick fix and some, you know, illusory promise now. So just some quote by Dr. Adrian Rogers here. What one person receives without working for this is the whole problem with socialism, as Margaret Thatcher said. You know, once the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money. And what he says here is what one person receives without working for, another person must work for without receiving. The government must not give to anybody anything that the government does not first take from somebody else. When half the people get the idea they don't have to work because the other half is going to take care of them, when the other half get the idea it does no good to work because somebody else is going to get what they work for, that, my dear friend, is about the end of any nation. You cannot multiply, my friend, wealth by dividing. Powerful quote. I'm sure you would agree. And inevitably, what does that tell you? The system, as you know, it will end. It will end. The Roman Empire ended. Greater empires in America, the Persian Empire, the Spartan Empire, the, Greek, the Grecian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, they all ended for the same kind of reason. So is America going to be any different? Of course it won't. What's going to be the next world power economy, the, the Asian economy, Hong Kong, Singapore, the ones that are following more tested and proven economic principles? And I have, I have basically clowns on our Facebook group sometimes write comments. So I just shake my head and go, God, you know, go and, you know, talking about, well, you know, like Finland charges tickets in tax and it works. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, it worked for a time. Proven countries. 
are ones that basically encourage people and reward people for building wealth. Now, I've shown these other ones, but these are always worth showing. And this is really annoying because I actually had this fixed up, but okay, so let's do. Okay, let me just fix that up, done. Okay, so this just gives you an example of right now what goes on on an income of 400K, okay? And I'm saying that because a lot of you on this webinar, you know, you're on various things, but generally no one on here is really on a low income. So this is what you get when you get caught up in Western world taxation systems and on average. Now keep in mind, this is income taxes alone. And this doesn't cover GS, sales taxes, GST, stamp duties, and all kinds of other stupid taxes that get, that get put. So at the end of the day, the way an empire collapses is that the wealthy, and believe you me when I say that the wealthy have are, are, are long gone, they've long got themselves out, they're long falling out. So you've got more and more people who have got the real wealth falling out. So guess what? Are government expenses increasing? Of course they are. People are demanding more money. Politicians want to do more. Barnaby Joyce, you know, maybe he wants more lovers. I don't know. He needs more apartments to them. But they want to do more overseas trips. They desire to go in more helicopters. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. And they need more money. And they want more money. And they don't want to work for it. There's a very good book by a guy called Bill Bonner, a billionaire called Hormageddon, where he talks about the zombie apocalypse, where you've got a world with more and more zombies, people who actually don't actually do anything, but get paid for it. And a good example is bankers. Bankers don't actually do anything. Now, you might, you, you might argue with me, but what are they actually doing? They're administering a system where they're lending you money that doesn't actually exist. It's all been written on a computer and taking security over a real tangible asset, I car your house. <laughs> and, I mean, what a great scam. If I basically did that, I mean, I'd be super rich and then I'd, uh, and for a while until I got arrested for a Ponzi fraud and then I'd go to jail. But that's basically what, how the banking system works. Now, this is the kind of thing that can take hours to show you the mechanics of how the banking system works, but once people realize it, they stare in absolute horror. And the reason why countries eventually collapse is because people actually work it out finally. And when they can't, and they go to the banks and discover that they can't get money from the ATMs because the ATMs have been frozen because the banks don't have the reserves or money in there to pay you because the money's already either been, been made up. So the banks, for example, may have a billion dollars loans on their books, but actually only have a, not even anywhere near that amount in there. So if everyone walked into the banks and asked for them and, and withdrew their money, the banks couldn't pay. Is there anyone who didn't know that out of interest? But if you went right now to the bank, and if everyone did in Australia or America, that the banks couldn't actually give you your money. Is there anyone here who didn't know that? I'm just curious. They couldn't actually give you the money. Yeah, most people I suspect know that by now. But, I mean, you've worked enough with me or in sovereignty over the years to know that. Yeah, man, to try getting 10K cash from a bank. Yeah, exactly. So, the whole point is, is it's a, based on a fraudulent, illusory system. Now, the real wealthy know that true wealth is held in tangible assets, i.e., the right kind of property, and I emphasize that the right kind of property, and things like real wealth, like gold, silver, platinum, jewelry. If you actually study the mechanics and the things that, people, that the rich buy, art is very common, beautiful art, wines would, would probably amaze you, jewelry, precious stones, gold, silver, platinum. Art, by the way, is a really big one. But as a wine collections, why? Because they actually are tangible assets. Gold. I don't think I have a single wealthy client, very wealthy client, who doesn't have a reasonable proportion of their money in physical, tangible gold. And a reasonable majority of it actually control it themselves. They've actually bought the physical gold. Some basically buy it and then have it stored overseas or in a vault somewhere else or someone else or someone else. That's a little bit more risky unless you really know what you're dealing with. The point is they know that gold is still about real assets and they're willing to ride some of the fluctuations that happened in these things. 
Gold and silver has been going up quite a bit this year, apart from a recent correct correction. And my personal view is it's going to keep going up for quite a while. And most of the top investment experts who I work with are saying something similar. And that's just simply because people are waking up and they're seeing the problems. So people are starting to buy in. It hasn't even gone mainstream. Cryptocurrency hasn't even gone mainstream yet. There's a number of opportunities that haven't even gone mainstream. There's a way of producing income, for example, which can make you about 15% per annum, but is safe as anything, completely legal, but very few people know about it. Who didn't know about that? There's actually ways you can make a fix a a 15% income or um, per annum, pretty much doing very pretty much doing one thing that's so safe that even the US Securities Commission have approved it as a safe investment. Well, man, this is what is it? Well, there's a few, but yeah, I mean, this is the, but these are the kind of things that, um, like, no, serious, Connor. Things what's called covered call option writing shares. Um, now, you've got to learn how to do it, but most people don't want to take the effort to learn how to do it. Because it does take a bit of learning, a bit of understanding, a bit of skill, and a, bit of, and a little bit of time. Not initially a bit of time, and then once time, once you get used to it, it's about half an hour a month. But just one example, covered call option writing. I, I have a high net worth client who makes about 25% per annum doing that because they're a bit more skilled than, say, most people. So I keep it pretty cautious, about 15% per annum. They make about 25 to 40% per annum. And in the bad year, 20%. So that gives you a little bit of an idea why these guys are high net worth. They put the time in to learn this kind of stuff. So, Fiona, when are you going to tell us how? Well, we've got some meetings ahead, haven't we, Fiona, to, to educate you more about this kind of stuff and then show you where to go so you can actually go and meet people who can help you with that one. So, yeah, I'll be going through all that, um, whatever. So, yeah, a lot of people are asking. So it's something I'd be very happy, for example, at some stage to educate people or introduce you to, to people who can help you with that, as an example, or learn a bit more about it yourself and do your more education. But that's just one example about sovereignty, but people don't know because people don't have the time. And then those who don't have the time and then said, look, I prefer someone else to do it for me. Well, the problem is the kind of people that will do it for you are people who don't run the official regulated funds. They run the more private opportunities, but if you don't meet sophisticated investment requirements, then you're not going to get the opportunity unless it's a word of mouth and you fall in what's called the word of mouth um, exception. So as you can see, there's a lot of like loopholes and safeguards and obstacles in your way to success. Most people prefer the easy way. Turn up to your doctor. Go and get some drugs. Get some pills. Go and get some that, that kind of stuff, you know. Get some pills. Get some drugs. Get some get something of that kind. As you know, I'm being a bit more liberal in what I'm sharing here because it's recorded. I'm not going to be releasing this webinar. I'm going to be giving a recording to a few other clients who couldn't make it tonight and specifically asked me and they were so annoyed because they were actually caught up in things and I made an exception to them. But generally, unless you're live, I'm not going to give this because I don't particularly want this webinar being, being out listened to governments or anything like that. I mean, the reason why is very simple. Although I'm very clear I'm staying within the law and what I'm saying to you, and for example, educating you, yeah, I'll, it's like I don't want people to know whether – you know, I, I, my girl, my partner doesn't want people to know whether she, what colour knickers she's wearing. You know, that's just because it's a private thing for her. I I don't want you to know what colour mine are. You know, my jocks are. That's just my own privacy. And likewise, there's certain things I share, especially around the financial investments, but I prefer to keep that way. So the point is, yeah, so already some of you got pretty like, wow. That's just one example, by the way. Another example is Swiss annuities. And again, Who's heard of Swiss annuities? Something that the super wealthy use. 12% per annum minimum in some of these if you know what you're doing. Who, who, anyone of you heard of Swiss annuities? Switzerland. Yeah, man, no way. No, never. Yeah, exactly. See, people have been absolutely hoodwinked. You kept it in the dark because um, and when you're in a Western country like Australia, you don't know much. And for example, if you go and I remember when I first started traveling a lot, I was amazed going to places like Thailand and Philippines. Like, for example, if, like in Philippines, where you can just get in a jet ski and, and, and go riding out to islands, whereas over here with all kinds of insurance rules. Over in Philippines, you can just hire a motorbike, provided you're 12 years old or over on most islands. 
I was hiring motorbikes and I never ride motorbikes. I didn't even have a license, never learned. And I, and I got shown how to ride one and worked out for myself. Rode down, I think the first time I fell off the bike and I uh, got up a bit, of, a bit sore and not that bad really, just minor little grace and we worked out how to do it. So the point is, is that it's a bit like this as well. The wealthy know, they look into things. The greatest thing I ever learned from one of my clients who literally went from no money to 30 million in 18 months, and I asked him, what, what on earth, how did you do it? And he told me about cryptos investing, but he said that, and he actually said his exact words, and if all of you take this on board, it will change your life. He said, the biggest thing that first had to change was the way I thought about life and about money. He said, I realized the biggest obstacle to wealth was me. He said, I didn't know what it was to be sovereign. He said, I was working, I was a contractor, I thought I was really clever because I was making about 200 grand a year, but then it was being spent on this, on that, on all these needs of families and, and all that. And I realized, and he said, the biggest problem was he said, I was too mainstream in my thinking. And he said, although I was always a bit of a rebel, he said, I, didn't, I was always cautious with change. I was, I, I was skeptical. So he said, I decided to stop being skeptical. I decided to still be wise. But he said, any new opportunity, no matter how stupid it seemed, I had an open mind to it. He said, I looked at cryptos, I looked at cannabis, I looked at all stuff that before I would never look at. And after three months of studying it, I thought, this crypto looks good. And he did it. He's now bought various businesses that he's done similar kind of philosophy, prospering like crazy right now. And because he changed the way he thought about life and became sovereign. He... He, he, he invested with me quite heavily, worked with me for many, many months to really help him do that even further and grow that. And again, same kind of thing. Just said to me, you know, best work, best money at the time he spent working with us because he just said, look, you know, and I loved working with him because he probably was one of the broadest minded thinkers I've ever met. So as a client, I could tell him anything and everything. I told him stuff I've never told him as any other client because this guy just got it. He just got anything. Could he just, he freed his mind. And nothing was off limits. He would look into it, but nothing was off limits. He got to the stage where he'd invest like, uh, like, a, like a million in a crypto and it dropped 90% and he lost 900 grand. He goes, whatever. He goes, so be it. He just said he became so neutral. He thought, who cares? He said, the main thing is I learn and master the system and become unafraid. That was his biggest thing that he taught himself. So there's so much about sovereignty that you can learn and become in the way you think and who you are and in the, and in the nature of who you are, but smashes the old system and the way of thinking. So, I mean, this, by the way, it's now hitting about, the problem with this figure I've got here, I, I've read everything from 57 trillion to 100 to 200 trillion. I personally think it's more like about two, 300 trillion when you take off balance sheet debt into account. But these are the kind of debts of artificial, non-existent, created by a pen stroke money from banks owned by private effing individuals, excuse the French, to governments. So basically, you're living in a whole world which is basically controlled by banks with private people who purchase the rights to history books and have literally written the history books to, to give you their version of the facts. And, and what history is. My father, who's a brilliant historian, admitted to me about nine months ago. He said, the reality of history, he said, you're only reading a book, which all we know is a fiction story. And he said, as time's gone on, I question the, the accuracy of many history books, which I've looked at. I've actually, with my own eyes, I met a guy in our underground off the grid movement, who I was part of, who used to be involved in secret um, work with the New Zealand government. And because of me being a bit of a crazy person, I just hunted this guy down and in the end insisted on paying his flights to convince him to fly and spend two weeks with me and live with me in my house for two weeks. And I just said, teach me everything you know. Because this guy was a bit of a legend in the, in the underground movement. He'd beaten governments in all kinds of court cases on everything. He hadn't paid tax for 20 years and on lots of money. He openly walked into court and told the tax office he wouldn't pay tax anymore unless they proved they were illegal to him. And then ran away and he never heard from him again. This is the kind of guy that I was learning this from. And, yeah, he openly told me about this kind of stuff, but, you know, history books. He showed me history books that have been changed. I saw the 1907 Encyclopedia Britannica. I saw the 1914, a year after they were purchased by Rothschilds and banking fraternities. I saw whole sections erased. 
which expose certain things, and I'm serious. And the problem that I found was when I first learned all this, I went into shock. And for many years, I kind of pretended I didn't know it all because I learned some stuff I didn't really want to learn. And in recent probably years, I've realized like, well, far out, you know, may as well, may as well start sharing this. Who's finding this a little bit mind-blowing? I'm curious. Who, or who's enjoying it? Just in the text chat. Love some feedback. Who's enjoying all this and kind of having their mind given a little bit of a slamming? Yeah, Christine's very interesting. Duncan's enjoying it. Connor, yeah. Irving, Nathan as well. Yeah, look, Nathan, I'll be frank with you. I was blown away when I saw history books, how blatantly changed they'd been. Yeah, Darren, I knew Darren would love it. Darren, Darren's, Darren's classic. He's just, you know, go-getter. Yeah, absolutely. There's just so much. So, yeah, when you get your mind back and get your freedom back, and John says, even if socialist is enjoying it, yeah, by the time you, you hang around me too much, John, you'll smash socialism, mate, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically... These are the kind of debts you're talking about. Now, I'll show you something. Contrast these countries. Singapore is also is, is, is only about a couple of hundred, um, 280 million or something. Interestingly, that all these countries um, charge little tax. New Zealand a bit more, but the other ones, no to minimal tax. <laughs> Isn't that funny? These countries charge huge tax. So why are they charging you huge taxes? <laughs> you can see, can't you? They're, paid, they're charging you taxes. If you've worked out that they're charging you taxes, not for social services, but to pay these guys, you bingo. You're right. By the way, from my time in the underground movement and seeing evidence, I know for a fact this goes on. I know for a fact that income tax is purely an interest payment on the national debt, admitted by government Beasley Rumi. There was, I've seen um, quotes and documents. The Reserve Bank admitted this. I've seen a legal document with my own eyes where the Australian Taxation Office admitted they're not a legal entity. And yes, if you if you just about had your socks blown off, it's true. I sat there and saw it with my own eyes written. It was a secret internal document that wasn't meant to be leaked. I had a guy show me it. And crazy stuff. So a lot of this is just one big scam. And all these things over here, they are charged that. And so if you don't want to be a central government patsy and basically paying these private cartels, then yeah, absolutely. This is why you, you want to start becoming sovereign, learn the system and get your, get your, your mental strength and, in a word, get your balls back. Because in society, a lot of people have lost their balls. We've got a, a world growing up of people who are afraid to speak their truth and on different things. And the ones who are are getting results. The ones who do crazy protests on stupid stuff to getting a voice, like some of the vegan, vegan activists, for example. Yeah, you can see here, there's massive financial stuff going on and taxes that are being charged that are outrageously wrong. There's countries right now that are literally like Hong Kong. And some of you on this webinar have been structured in Hong Kong working with us, and you know what I'm saying, nil tax. And yeah, it's a prosperous country. Singapore, 15% tax, or set to 17. Prosperous country. And even the 15% tax is not taxable if it's overseas income. It's only on basically Singapore-based income. Panama charges 25% tax, but no tax on, on Panamanian, on foreign income. So all these countries here, they do it because they're wealthy, divided, but rich Arabs. They don't need to tax you. So understand what's going on here and why you're doing this and why this system is up. So... When you're not basically sovereign and not doing this, I always like to say playing football while wearing a 10 kilogram backpack. So this is a Reserve Bank admission that income tax only exists to basically um, to basically deal with the fact that money is printed out of nothing. Income tax has got nothing to do with social services. So when, when governments get up and say, you know, pay your fair share, well, yeah, you know, basically pay your fair share to make sure the bankers stay happy. So now, now a quick interlude just to introduce you a little bit more about us so you know a bit more about me. So this is, I've had over 30 years experience um, doing this kind of stuff. 
and then qualifications of accountant, lawyer, financial planner, so all kinds of weird, nerdy kind of qualifications. Um, been involved in the underground movement. These days, I do a lot more motivational speaking, spiritual teaching, and I'm also a trader as well, an investor. You know, I do trading and investing now. I invest in cryptocurrencies quite heavily. I do debt investing um, in all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff, and I trade as well um, and do sports betting systems. So there's a number of things I do. So I'm a bit of an unusual character. And one of the reasons I like sports betting systems is sports betting is completely tax-free because of a high court decision called Babko and Brachkovich, which said sports betting is completely gambling. Um, as people will tell you who've made massive incomes from it, well, there are ways to, to make income out of it without gambling. So it's, um, and also being a spiritual teacher is tax-free when you're running it through a legal church. So there's just a couple of little clues where by having knowledge and wisdom and sovereignty, you can do stuff. So, yeah, as John Cunningham says, taxes for revenue are obsolete. Absolutely, John, you know? A uh, bit more about me. Back to me last week, hiking the Daintree Rainforest. I was climbing up those creeks. I climbed up that rock, and then I was going rock climbing and climbing up streams. Um, so you can see what I do. That's me when I went to some scuba diving. Um, that's me scuba diving. Um, this is my partner, by the way, Sammy. Um, you can see our, our family is highly, highly unusual. Um, just give me one sec. I've just got to grab something. Um, yes, the screen disappeared because I have to... I just realised there's, there's something missing here. So give me a sec. So, I trust you can all see the screen again. So, this is Sammy, uh, my partner. And what's quite funny is we've got the craziest family. We've got my partner, Sammy, who's, you know, mid 20s, who regularly gets mistaken for my daughter when I'm out with, with places. But yet, we're very, very like minded. We literally are a great match, everyone who knows. And to make the, make the mystery more intriguing, and more exciting, there's my three of my four boys, and the fourth one doesn't like being photographed, so refuses. So, but he looks exactly like me. So these are the three, and by the way, all three of these guys are involved in our in our work. You've got two 15-year-olds, so most of the emails you see go out and stuff on Facebook and that are being run by these guys. The two guys at the front here, and then the guy at the back here does webinars with me. And I, unfortunately, I asked her for a serious photo, but that's what I got. My former wife's a little bit nuts, um, and she's involved in the work, and she and my partner get on like a house on fire. And she regularly comes over because my partner's an amazing cook, used to run a health food business, healed herself from an autoimmune disorder that she's told she'd never heal from through diet, is a master on food. And um, so basically, she's always going to come over and eat. So that's just giving you a bit of an idea of in every area of my life, I'm a complete nutcase. And I just don't, I don't do anything mainstream. So this is a bit of a crazy family. You've got the missing boy who won't be in the photo. You've got the, the, boy, the other three who are all working, all homeschooled, who've all told me I'll never have jobs um, and will always be sovereign. They heal themselves um, and work out how to fix themselves up. And then you've got Grace. And then you've got me rock climbing being a little bit different. And like I said, you've got my partner here. And... All that. So anyway, that's just a little bit more about us and just so you can meet us and that. There's Bina as well, who some of you know through WealthSafe, who's like my business partner in WealthSafe. I was going to get her to talk tonight, but she can't. She's at a school function, but I haven't got a photo of her. But next time, the both of you come to the part two of it, can see that. I was in Panama last year. I've also got a Panamanian tax residency. That can be another part of my sovereignty journey. Um, that's a little bit there, so you can see it. So, like I said, today's a bit of an introduction. Next week, I'm going to cover a little bit more. Um, just out of curiosity, who's enjoying this enough? They'll definitely come to the part two, which will be most likely next week, maybe the year after. <laughs> Grace says, you are so mean. <laughs> Karma's a bitch, and she's going to bite you. Yeah, my poor wife on the webinar. Yeah, no, you'll love it. 
Darren absolutely loves it, yeah. Um, brilliant. Now you all love it, everyone. This is I mean I, I love this. You're hearing my passion because this is really I decided that's why I'm doing this because I thought sometimes you get caught up with a webinar script when really I thought at the end of the day, this is my sovereignty, my passion to free people from the system and teach them what I know and just to basically expose the stupidity of what we see around us. So here's a quick thing about the five flags of freedom, which will be covered a bit more in the coming weeks. But um, citizenship, this is what I learned at the Top Sovereignty Conference from one of the best guys in the business I've ever met. That he said, ultimately, you're truly fully sovereign, which very few people get to. He said, if you've got citizenship freedom, which means you just don't have one citizenship, you've got multiple. You've got a tax residency item in Australia or item in a Western country, which you can use anytime you want to or even in it, I've got that with myself, I've got the tax residency. A business base, I've basically got four of those five myself, the only one I don't have right now is citizenship, and that's something that I plan to change in the next couple of years. But basically, residency, that's a, a, a tax residency, or else a way to minimise tax legally through other means. And one of my little sovereign tricks which I did was I decided, well, Hillary Clinton, Richard Branson, all these people pay minimal tax to live in their country. How do they do it? Barack Obama admitted one day, he kind of let it slip. He said the best way for people to minimize tax in America is basically in their own, to, to minimize taxes in a Western country is through other Western countries. He admitted that people outside of America can use Delaware and US corporations to minimize their taxes. So US is a fantastic tax haven for basically people in Australia and New Zealand and other ways. New Zealand's a good tax haven for Australia with certain things. And Australia's a good tax haven for certain US people. So there's things like that, they're little tips. Then you've got other tax havens as well, through like Hong Kong, Singapore, things like that. There's so much. You know, one of the things I noticed was how the wealthy use foundations, the Clintons foundations, Trumps, all of them, Rockefellers use foundation, Rockefeller, Rothschild. So I thought, well, I'll use foundations. So I'm going to be using a foundation. I'm going to be teaching on that. So who would be interested, by the way, because one of the things we're looking at doing in the future is doing topics of time. So if we did a bit of an intro webinar on foundations, who would be interested in coming along? Because like I said, I wanted to show people the basics. I mean, those who are keen, we can basically do more advanced teaching. That's our plan. So the plan for me is I'll be giving stuff to teach people about this. Those who want to learn the more detailed juicy, yeah, we'll be having the group, the sovereignty group opportunity that people can be part of. So, and that part there will be given the juicy, loosey stuff. <laughs> Ho Bing, do you really have to ask? <laughs> of course you've got to ask, Ho Bing. You know, you're a, you're a doctor, my friend. You've always got to ask patients before you do, do a surgery on them. So, which is what I'm doing here. And Nathan, the more detailed, the better. Joe, yes, please. Great. So, business. If you've got a job, well, you want a business, some kind of business that operates independently of you in some form. Otherwise, you're stuck to your business. And if you don't have that, you rely on the job. You rely on someone else. And investment base, even better, where you've got some kind of investment or passive income or, or tangible assets which you actually own, and ideally, which governments can't take off you. Keep in mind that in most Western countries, assets owned over here can be taken off you pretty easily. If you own properties in Australia, US, they can take them off you pretty easily. If you don't believe me, you don't read the news and don't read enough about laws. Uh, West Australia, for example, and most states of Australia have got forfeiture of crime laws now, where, for example, you can have your car taken off you. If you, let's say, that you lend your car to your friend and your friend goes driving in West Australia and they get caught under the hoon laws, they can confiscate the car, you might lose your car and you won't get it, and you won't get it back for a long, long time even though it's got nothing to do with you. Now, who doesn't know that? That's, that's a who law. You can, you can also, for example, in most states here, if let's say that unbeknownst to you, 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 you let someone stay in your house as a favour, they start throwing marijuana, you then basically illegally, they get, you get caught, they can then confiscate the house in some jurisdictions and you lose your house. Who didn't know that? That's like curiosity. Who didn't know those kind of facts? And these are just like teeny weeny entree stuff. Hope, hope goes, hoping goes well. Yeah, look, believe you me, if governments start passing hate crime laws and discrimination laws, 
you don't have to be you don't have to be too smart to work out. But if they decide they want your house, they can make up any stupid, um, like, crime law or, or something like, you know, you say something that basically upsets some person who wants to use a toilet for a woman, basically, for, because they're, now, they're a man who now says they're a woman and they want to use it and you speak against them, so you're guilty of a hate crime and then you can lose your house. If you don't believe me, look at countries where this kind of stuff goes on. And even forfeiture of crime laws, it gets, it gets broader, and they generally speak them true. So, and again, so most people go, well, I'll just basically keep, my, keep myself private. And yeah, Eliza goes, didn't know this was so out there. Look, it's very obvious, Eliza, because they know that by and large people are stupid and prefer to bury their head in the sand. And I'm being a bit blunt on this webinar because it's true. They know by and large that people are stupid, but most people... Either that or most people prefer to bury their head in the sand, or better word is ignorant. I'm not saying you're stupid. The fact you're here and I'm just blunt with you is because you're here and that makes you different. The fact you're here means you're keen to learn. It means you're here to explore. Most people don't want to know this stuff. They just think, oh, you're just a fanatic until they lose their house or until the government turns up and does some stupid regulation and they lose their business overnight or because some stupid thing happens and just like that you lose your money in an investment because of some technicality. So this is why true freedom and sovereignty means you have an investment base and not just sitting in your own country. You've got investments in other places. Cryptocurrencies took off so much because at least people can have them on wallets and it's harder for governments to track them and steal them. That's why they're terrified of cryptocurrencies. It's why Thanks to Donald Trump at the moment, I think they're going to explode in the near future because now he's getting nervous of them. So when got the more nervous governments get of them, the better it is for the long term because eventually they will become more mainstream. So an investment base. This is why I mentioned, if you don't know about these kind of opportunities that can make you 15 to 20% per annum but are very safe, then for goodness sake, get educated. If you didn't know about the kind of sophisticated investment opportunities you can get into, then get educated. I have a, I right now have a client. She hasn't done it for a few years now, but for 10 years she was regularly getting sophisticated investors for property development and she's getting them between 25 to 30% per annum on projects. And yes, you heard correct, 25 to 30%, but she only would invite people on a small private list to make sure she didn't get on the wrong side of the government. And most people are terrified now because if you market, for example, the US or Australian people, an asset called a securities commission go and get onto you, they get into trouble. Bank accounts get frozen. Most banks now won't give accounts to companies if they're receiving money from investors unless they've got a license. So keep in mind that the best opportunities, you'll never see them unless you somehow get yourself into the know. You get yourself into the right people. People will know who you are. You get yourself into the angel capital or investment movements. You get yourself into the property development. You start getting to find out about these opportunities. You get active. Then when you know about it, um, you can start to get into decent ones. That's how wealthy people get wealthier because they know this stuff. So privacy digital base, that's another one. So if you don't have ways to be private or at least keep certain things protected, well, you're very vulnerable. So that's why we got a lot of digital base. That's why you at least have overseas presences. That's why I like offshore, offshore presences as well as onshore presences. I love foundations because they're more protected. Governments tend to leave them alone a little bit more because governments do not want to be seen as targeting charity politically. That's why I like family trusts in Australia because I know that most politicians and farmers have got them. So these are five flags of freedom. So let's just cover a little bit more on this. And then like I said, I'm going to be kind of taking some questions and then we're going to be, I'll give you a sneak preview on the part two. So, I mentioned here about this kind of stuff. So some of this I'll move through a bit quicker now. The income taxes have historically only existed in feudalism and they're more blatant than they are now. The, there was a Harvard professor who did some research in a big study and he concluded and he proved that for anything over 15% tax, that the optimum tax rate for prosperity is around 10 to 15%. They find anything more than that, companies or individuals will pay large fees to people like me and others and, and our team to minimize tax. So if someone's making a million dollars a year, they'll, they'll live with 15% tax so they get really good benefits from their government in their societies. 
So who here would be willing to pay 10% tax in Australia? Just kind of say, give me a, a yes. If you'd be willing to pay 10 or even 15% tax, you could live with that. Yeah. Almost everyone says yes. I mean, I could. It's not unfair. In a prosperous country where there's great opportunity, great lifestyle, it's not unfair for me to pay some kind of amount or contribution to be used for government services and collective goods. But 25 to 30%, you're starting to get a little bit kind of antsy. Who here would be starting to get, it gets a little bit antsy around 25, 30%? Yeah. Who here gets absolutely morally pissed around 40 to 50% or more? Who gets completely like, you know? Yeah, Christine, yeah, plenty of you. Yeah, because intuitively we know it's stealing. We know it. And by the way, for those of you who want to learn more about sovereignty, I'm going to show you something. So income tax came from Karl Marx. Have a read one time of the 10 planks of communism. And in fact, let's just get it up right now. Do, 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 do. So have a look. And you'll see it yourself. Which, by the way, nine of these ten are implemented in Australia and ten in America. Australia is 90% communist and America is 100% communist. In fact, 90% it says here. Some say 100. So, losing private property rights. That's happened in Australia and America. I mean, governments can take it any time. Heavy or V that one there. That's communism. Losing inheritance rights, estate taxes, confiscation of the properties of rebels. Can they do that? You bet your life. Centralizing the credit by means of a national bank. That's what they've got now. Rather than individual currencies. Centralized transport. Ownership of factories and the farmers on this webinar will know exactly what I mean when they control wheat, food, factories, production. <laughs> Darren, Fiona and Christine will be nodding their heads when I'm saying this, I'm sure. Equal obligation of all to work. Agriculture. Breakdown of the rural and city distinction. Free education for children in schools to basically allow them to control education. Robert Kiyosaki writes a book about school, and he says the whole school system comes, comes back to the system in, in Prussia, ancient Prussia, to create sl slaves and soldiers. That's why my kids aren't out of school. Only one of them is my youngest, and he's only doing it, he only left homeschooling about a year and a half ago, and he's already told me he may go back to homeschooling next year. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's too enlightened from homeschooling, so he just basically refuses to do things at school that... He doesn't want to do, which the teachers have no idea what to do with. So, this is what happens when people get freedom. So, I think Darren and Fiona, watch out. You know, if Evan being around Grace, he may become may become sovereign, and he may stand up. You never know. So, anyway, um, there's a very good book here, The Law by Bastiat. If you ever want to read a really good one, and Bastiat basically says, legal plunder. It's basically what he calls government stealing from you, but putting it in a framework that's kind of a bit like the abusive partner saying to you, when I beat you up, it's my way of loving you, and you learn to accept that. And that's what they find in abusive relationships. So legal plunder is where governments kind of teach you that, we, that, that we're not actually stealing from you. We're just basically taking what's a correct share to do this while taking 50% of your money. And he says it's actually stealing. Because original common law actually said that everyone has got the rights to life, liberty, and property. So you got it here. Every one of us has a natural right to defend this person, life, liberty, and property. So any laws that take away your right to self-defense, that take away your right to liberty, and take your property with you without due process, that's actually stealing. Or that's bullying. Anything other than that is not a just and righteous government. So the law becomes perverse. And one thing Bastiat talks about is the difference between lawful and legal. 
lawful means it's a fair and just law. Like, for example, if I go and steal, say, someone's car in this webinar, lawful says, well, no, but I'm violating your rights to property. So there has to be consequences for me for doing that. That's actually law. But some kind of state entity government that doesn't actually have anyone really owning it, but just some cartel with secret owners that can turn up and take 50% of your money or put you in some jail and whatever else, that's got nothing to do with it. That's got nothing to do with law. So it's converted plunder into a right to protect plunder. Government officials can come and take from you, to steal from you, whenever they actually feel like. That's legalized plunder. It's things like China passing a law that says, if you've got more than one child, bring him into the government, we'll kill him. Like the East Town, like the one child policy. That's legalized murder. And so realizing that, it's very important to realize that high taxes is actually a form of theft. And once you get that, you become stronger. You become more clear. You become more vicious in your planning and in your sovereignty. Um, path to say, no, screw this. I'm not going to do anything stupid, but at the same token, I'm not going to sit here and basically be plundered. So, basically, as soon as the plunder classes become chaos, in other words, and historically, this is what happens. People get plundered, they get angry, they stand up, they eventually get into power, then they start doing the same thing. So, my desire is to see a lot of people become sovereign, become very, very wealthy, in this time to come because there's going to be opportunities to create wealth like like haven't been seen since the great depression before that and even bigger than that i personally believe we have chances in fact that for some of the greatest opportunities to make wealth that's been in, in years and hundreds of years you've got people becoming billionaires in their 20s right now it's crazy and i i, I believe you'll see more of this kind of stuff and so it's a great opportunity and then to use it for good to help the world rather than simply create another form of plunder to steal from people and break the patterns. That's the biggest thing I'd love to see because it's a greater evil, it's a great evil when law becomes a way to plunder people and steal from people and take what is their rightful possessions. Law is for justice. It's not to steal from you. So this is a great book. That's it, the law. Great reading. I recommend you read it. So it's been around, and of course, Kiyosaki talks about this. I learned about this in the underground as well. But basically, originally, people were promised that tax would never be paid by the middle class or the poor. Um, it would only be paid by corporations. And as we know, of course, they came in, and now the middle class and poor pay, middle class pay all the taxes, and the rich don't pay it. So that's the reality of the system. So... The Roman Empire collapsed because of high taxes and lazy government with more public servants than productive members of society. So it's important to get this and understand this. So taxes will continue to increase by and large because I don't think governments are, are willing to basically take the hard hit. I know for a fact, again through my inside, underground, off the radar comments, but the, but the Australian government are, are, are nervous and scared as anything because everything I'm saying they know about. And I remember 11 years ago doing a seminar in Perth at the Hyatt Hotel and having someone come to me afterwards who'd been and heard a friend involved in international banking who'd watched my, web, my presentation. And he goes to me, how does this guy know this stuff? He goes, we know this in the banking industry. Because I was saying this 11 years ago and people thought I was a bit of a fruitcake 12 years ago. He said, how does this guy know this stuff? He said, He's saying stuff that we all know is going to happen and we're all prepared for in the next um, five to 15 years. He said, in the future, we don't, or at some stage, he said, how does this guy know this stuff? I'm really curious. And in recent times, I was told the government knows this is coming. They've sought advice on how to prevent it or minimise it, but the problem is the sacrifices that have to be made, they're not willing to make. On top of that, their banking bosses have pretty much told them that it's not going to happen. So the system is heading for an almighty collapse. And, you know, ignore what I say at your peril. What I can't say is the timing. What I can say is it will happen. And it's like when I see someone eating the worst food on the planet over and over again and sitting on a computer 
hunched over and never doing any kind of exercise. And now you know at some stage you're going to have some kind of complications. You don't know what, but you know inevitably the chickens will come home to roost. So it's just important to get this and become, and those of you who choose to become educated and learn this stuff can honestly be part of one of the greatest wealth transfers in history and part of being some of the greatest good for the planet that's been seen. So these are just some examples of what tax planning, and some of you have already seen this before, but have a really good look at this, you know? This is the kind of, you know, like I mentioned, these are the kind of taxes or whatever else that, of what happens and what can actually end up happening. So, in other words, by, by simply minimizing your taxes over 10 years, you can literally almost increase your wealth by threefold, which is crazy. Absolutely nuts, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Look at over 20 years. And this is one thing that the Book of Wealth, by the way, said. It said the difference between the difference between the very, very wealthy and those who became billionaires and those who died, the billionaires think long term. They're not, they're not afraid to think a 20 year investment strategy or 10 year. Most people can't even think beyond a year or two or even five years. So it's really, 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 really important to get this. And I'm sure that you do. So, question to ponder. So really, this is more just a question for you to ponder for yourself, you know? What are you going to do about it? And look, this is something that these days are becoming a little bit more blunt because I find that if I don't, people don't get anywhere. The truth is, there's a few rules I've learned in life that don't, things that I call virtually never change, okay? They virtually never change. Something that a very good business mentor once told me, which I'll just show you something here. So I'm going to write, I haven't got this slide here, but I'm going to put this down. These are going to be what I call lessons I've learned, I'm going to say. So, There are a couple of things I've learned. So the three C's, currency. In other words, for something that you're doing in business or investment or the people that you work with in your team before picking anyone to work with you, anyone to marry, anyone to take on their advice, anyone to basically become a mentor or teach you stuff or anyone you want to employ in your business or contract in. It, it just use this test. And if you use this test, you'll never have a problem. Currency. Is what they're saying right now. That's very, very important. So many people, for example, like even people you might employ in a business or people you might hire as a mentor, what they're saying might have worked three years ago, but doesn't work now. Competency. Can currency change? The answer is can change. Because the question is, so if someone's not current, can they change? Yes, it's possible. There was a time when I wasn't very current in what I'm doing. I, I reinvented myself, reinvented my skills. So, and competency, skill level. This can be taught as well, by the way. So I like, for example, employing people who are green or even people I get as mentors, I don't often mind if basically, as long as they're willing to grow, they're willing to reinvent themselves, they're willing, they're, they're young, they're hungry, they're willing to look at it. 
right now in our thing, we're looking at getting certain awakening work and other work we're doing up. And I, I said to Grace, you know, hungry people. Vina, who's my business partner in Wellsafe, for some of you who didn't know, I've known her for years, but when she started working with me, she was a trainee accountant four years ago. She hadn't even got a degree. New, new, but she was hungry. She spent years going to every seminar and educating herself on investments and, and business and high level stuff and out of the box. She reinvented herself, learnt this stuff, and is now my business partner because she's spectacularly good. So skill level, people willing to reinvent themselves. Character. This, by the way, is not something that people can change very easily. Are they honest or are they all dishonest, asshole, etc.? So that's really important. By and large, I'm going to say this. Leopards don't change spots. Very simple. I find if someone does the wrong thing by you once, they'll probably do it again. If someone deliberately overcharges you or gives you stupid stuff, they're unlikely to stop doing it. I learned when I was dating that girls who nag me early on or do something awful to me in the first, second or third date are going to be even worse as time goes on. And I'm sure you're all agreeing with me by now on this. So these are important lessons and are certainly becoming sovereign is becoming a lot more discerning on this area of your life and what you tolerate, and certainly with governments, in seeing that when governments promise things, most people don't trust them anymore. So in becoming sovereign and in choosing anything that you're learning is to look at this. So these are some lessons to share. The other thing is that people, by and large, don't change about a fundamental upheaval. And I'm saying this, this three C's will lead up into this, my main point that I wanted to make. My experience is that I remember having a client come to me last year who I really like this guy, by the way, and I still do. I think he's a top guy. But, I, but after a short period of time working with him, I knew this guy had virtually no chance of becoming sovereign. You know why? He was in his 50s. He failed in a couple of businesses. That's not a problem. But each time he'd given up and gone back to a job. Now, as soon as I heard that, I remember saying to someone and got the full appreciation, I said, Dave, he's got no chance because I said, if he's done it twice before, he'll do it a third time. I mean, it takes those of you who he is in business and knows how much toughness it takes to, to grind through. Sometimes in business, your cash flow has fallen down the toilet and you just got to hang in there and people chasing you for money like no tomorrow, and you just got to push through it. Who's been in that situation in business or investing? Who's seen investments just go nowhere for ages? Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> this even yet, yeah, man, and many times. Exactly. It takes absolute toughness to do it. I find, for example, that with many people who, who work for me. I've noticed that, for example, they got no chance of being sovereign because by and large, they prefer what's comfortable. To become sovereign means you've got to be willing to be uncomfortable. The reason that my back's in the best state it's been in, in, in a long time is I did the opposite. I did the uncomfortable thing. I was scared shitless of doing certain exercises on my back. So what did I do? I did them. I... I was told not to climb mountain, not to do any rock climbing for a while because I wasn't ready. So I went and did it because I thought, you know what? At the end of the day, people in ancient times did it. And intuitively, I felt it was right. I trusted myself. And I thought, at the end of the day, I'm going to get strong. I'm going to get tough. And I'm going to get, get my strength back, get my confidence back in my body. So... Yeah, hi, being you're a legend. I love what he says here. He says, so uncomfortable to hear and basically shining a light in a huge weakness. Yeah, but look, we've all got this weakness, hi, being. It's just that you're man enough to, to own it. And that's part, that's why, you're, you know, I like working with someone like you. Because, yeah, most people don't have the confidence. I mean, they have the strength and their mental toughness to do it. Most people are going to die on this webinar, or not maybe on this webinar, hopefully not, but on most webinars, with regrets, knowing you've never lived your dreams and never become sovereign because you prefer to be comfortable. You've lived your life keeping your wife or husband happy. You've lived your life trying to be a responsible father or a good mother. You've lived your life 
trying to be the good responsible citizen who doesn't get on the wrong side of the tax office. You want to be the person who at least has got a stable income and a stable job, rather than being willing to get out there and go, what the flippin' heck, let's just give it a go. You know, I've lost, I've lost all my money about three times in my lifetime. I don't know if I've ever shared this openly. Do I regret it? Not in the slightest, because I've bloomin' lived. I gave it a go. I failed spectacularly a few times. Twice it broke me really badly. I remember nine years ago, I was a broken mess. I'd lost everything. It was August 2010, the 4th of August. I'm sitting there in an office with a guy who's chasing me for a multi-million dollar debt, who's viciously saying he's going to take me out if I don't pay him. I've lost my business at the same time. I've got investors who've lost money with me, who trusted with me. I've got clients everywhere hating me. I've got um, I've got Grace, who's here now listening, but, you know, it walked out on me, pissed off with me. I had no money. I, I was sitting on Brighton Beach, sobbing my eyes out, absolutely shaking with my nervous system, such a mess on my liver tonic. I don't, I've never shared this before on a webinar, but openly, I was a broken mess. But I remember that day when I sat on the beach and I walked away from the beach. I got a clearest download and I just walked away and I thought, you know what? I was, a, I actually said I'm a fucking, I was a fucking idiot in the way I ran my business. I was a narcissist, I was stupid and all that. But at the same time, I gave it a go. And I thought, the one thing I said in my heart, I said, I will not go back to a job. If necessary, I'll go and live in my bloomin' shed and I'll live on no food if I have to, but I will not get a job. I will not do it. I will not give up this dream. I will build myself back. And I will come back from this. And I walked away from the beach and my strength came back into me. 24 hours later, I felt different. And I thought to myself, and yet Grace has walked out on me and I deserved her to walk out on me. I was an absolute lunatic. Um, yeah. So I said, you know, blow this. And so I said, first thing I want to do, I got back in the dating world straight away. Just got straight back into it. Got rejected numerous times because I had no idea in the dating world anymore and I was doing stupid stuff. Um, but I, and I then went and did courses, learn about it. I got back in business. I got back. I went out there. I was smart. I worked things out. Within a month, I had the business working again. Had a new one up and running, working effectively, working with three moms successfully, bringing in income, doing very well. And I know it's because I just said I am not allowing myself the, the opportunity or to fail. I'm not giving myself that option. So... The reason why, so that's why I'm sharing this, this side of me, a deeper, more vulnerable side that I haven't shared on webinars before because in a way, I was scared to share it with clients because I thought people would see me as a bit of a failure. And I eventually realized how dumb that was. But I can honestly tell you I've lived. That's why I know I, I live sovereignty because I, I've lived. Yes, I failed three times, got up every single time, and now I love what I'm doing now. It's doing well. I know that I have the skills to be able to pull myself out of any hole because I've done it three times. I know that I've lived many of my dreams many times over. The ones I haven't lived, I'm working on now to start living. I, because that real sovereignty is you can look back without regrets. And really, these days, I can tell you, I don't. I've lived my life. I've got, and I've got so much more to do. And so that's why I said sovereignty is a lifestyle. You know, break your addiction to being comfortable. You know, break it. You know, you can be comfortable... When you've got security, it's like imagine that you were the best fighter in the world and you were walking out the street, you'd be at peace because you know that no one could take you out. Imagine that you know no matter what's going on in life and business or whatever else, you can make it work. You know, you're going to be scared, but you feel the fear and you do it anyway. And do I not feel fear anymore? No, of course I do. You know, I have periods when I'm, I've been scared lately because of new steps I've been taking. I'm doing new things in my training and going to new levels that are a bit, bit scary because I'm testing some stuff right now that, yeah, could either make me a lot of money or lose me a lot of money. I don't know. But I'm confident that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'll just try something else. But the truth is, many of my investments that have taken off spectacularly have been simply because I was willing to give it a go. So the point is with sovereignty, if you're really committed to being sovereign, I'm sharing this with you because this is what it's going to take. And I love what Hope Inc. said about a huge weakness. So really, don't be afraid to shine the spotlight on your own soul and see where in my soul am I not sovereign? Where am I soul am I slave? Am I a slave to my business? Am I a slave to my profession? 
Am I a slave to my husband or wife? Am I a slave to my kids? Am I a slave to my diet? Am I a slave to the government? Am I a slave to the banks? Where am I a slave right now? And then start going, right, I'm going to reclaim my soul and get back my freedom and start that process of doing that. And that takes a really good, close, hard look at yourself and being willing to do that. And believe me, as you do that, you'll get strong. And that's when you can start the things. Like, for example, is it hard to set up offshore and become structuring? Yes, it's very hard. It's much harder than doing it in, in Australia or somewhere which you're comfortable with. Is it more risky? Yes, if you don't know what you're doing, not if you don't know what you're doing. Is it risky to rock climb? Yes, if you don't know what you're doing, but no, if you're a professional stunt, a stunt man or woman. Is it risky? So the key is to get educated and be willing to get started in this kind of stuff. Is getting an overseas investments or different investments scary? Yes, it is. Did cryptocurrency scare me? Yes, it did. A whole number of the ones I invested in, I lost all my money in. But overall, I've ended up well in front because I, I used wisdom and got advice from the best cryptocurrency clients that all become multimillionaires. I got them to teach me. So the point is, is that it's being willing to get educated, willing to get knowledgeable, and becoming sovereign in the five flags, like a business base, learning how to be able to grow and build businesses and eventually become an owner of your business and other businesses, to get investment, get a residual income, get, get a good privacy base, eventually get a good tax residency, or if not a tax residency, at least what I call effective structuring. So I'm just going to refine what I wrote there before about the five flags, just to help you out a little bit further, and say residency, tax structuring. Because, I mean, you may not have a tax residency, but if you've got darn good structuring. So, sovereign really just means this, and I'm going to be ending up in the next 15 minutes because I'm not going to go above two hours today. But let's just explore quickly to finish off with before we take some questions, and then I'll give you a sneak preview for next, next week. The quality or state of being sovereign. So, sovereignty is the full right and power to govern yourself by any interference from outside sources or bodies. So that's basically what it is. So I've mentioned this here about the mindset around tax uh, minimization. So politicians, religions, this kind of stuff. So now what I'm going to do is just quickly move through of next week um, and just finish off some of these. And we cover this a little bit more next week. But basically high taxes, wealth confiscation, changing retirement rules. <coughs> and this is what I wanted to allude you to is that... <clears throat> A very effective way of stealing your money from you is number one, creating a banking system where they can create money out of nothing because they dilute the value of your wealth, number one. Two, just laws that can take it off you. Another one is just changing rules like legalized plunder. So retirement rules. So if all your wealth is in Australia or US or somewhere else, well, you are so vulnerable, it's not funny. You better hope to heck things don't change. But they will change. So... Capital control, government changing that. Understand that in the Roman Empire, in every society before it's collapsed, Venezuela, everything, they eventually start making it hard to get money out. You've noticed now that getting cash is almost impossible. Getting more than 10 grand out, very hard without getting scrutinized. So don't be surprised if in many countries you're going to start leaving, getting your wealth out of the country will become almost impossible. So mismanagement of government expending, expenditure. There's another one. So as an example here, in the global 1% of the high net worth in their little society, $50 million entry. This, this, this slide, by the way, I, will, I, I don't want to take credit. This, 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 this slide I've got on right now, this particular one, I copied directly from the sovereignty convention I was at. You know, I, just, I just used it because I was so impressed with it. But basically, the orchestration about three years ago, when I was at one of the best sovereignty private conventions, there was only by invitation only for sovereign individuals, and there's only 10 of us invited in Hong Kong. But orchestration of the GFC, that was blatantly contrived to, to transfer wealth. And it's not hard to work that out when Barack Obama did a huge bank bailout and increased the, the, the debt from $4 trillion to $16 trillion in virtually no time. Top 1% earn greater than 40% of the income and no 90% of the assets. These are what statistics, in fact, actually show. 
Here's an example of where politicians are telling you not to go offshore. Trump, by the way, Vladimir Putin was set up in Panama as well. The papers show that. Turnbull has a hedge fund in the Cayman Islands. Romney, Bermuda and the Caymans, met Romney. <laughs> so you think that Bill Shorten, I don't know, I've heard without knowing for certain, he's got stuff as well. So most of them, but they know how to use the law. <laughs> how funny is that, eh? He finds this kind of really, he's like absolutely a little bit annoyed and like absolutely stunned to hear this. Well, I just told you that these guys, this is what these guys do. Mitt Romney, former Republican leader. Just type in the text chat. What do you guys all think about that? <laughs> Richard, not surprised, but still stunned. Yep. Yeah, they're going to look after themselves with the system. Of course. So only one person shocked by this. Christine's heard it before. <laughs> Darren, not so much to learn. <laughs> yeah, Darren, it's only this big one, mate. So these are the kind of things. So we're all sort of politicians, we're all sort of people. They're structured in all kinds of different places. I'll be covering this a little bit more next week. 21 shareholders of the central bank. So the royal family. Um, the Schiffs, the Warburgs, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, there's a number of these families who all own the central bank. So effectively, all the world and the banking system is controlled by them. So effectively, I actually was with a guy in, about many years ago who actually discovered he, he basically was a very, very, very good researcher. And through a series of contacts, they discovered that 86% of shares in public companies in Australia, for example, were owned by a small number of shadow corporations in the Cayman, Virgin Islands, and a few others. They could, couldn't trace the shareholders back. But, of course, they were able to have a pretty good guess. I met someone who showed me the evidence that a few key individuals and little cartels owned almost all, all the major real estate and companies in West Australia, for example. I actually have the names, so and I'm not going to name them on the webinar. So this is the kind of stuff that you're dealing with. So... I've gone through all this. I'm going to cover some of this next week. And, you know, where they invest and structure, a little thing about these, go through these, and just give you one sneak preview about what the richest people are and what they actually do. So give you a bit of a sneak preview on that one. And foundations and religious and blind trust and just expose you to structuring and what they do and a bit more in five flags of freedom. So I'll cover all of this next week, go a little bit more... A quick introduction to different jurisdictions and structures, the Western laws on residency and um, CSC, just a little bit of a quick intro on these. And I'm going to open up for questions now before I end. So questions, everyone. Any questions? <laughs> Point being, how do you expect me to sleep tonight? Unfortunately, I don't think you will, Hoping. <laughs> In fact, I mean, my Fiona and Darren mind blown. Yeah, now it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Nathan, looking forward to next week. Yeah, it's you're gonna have fun. I'm, I, I am too. I actually love this. It's exciting. I love teaching this stuff. John, can't wait to do the next part. Yeah, so look, what, like I said, so I'm going to um, leave it today and I'll be doing it next week. With the same time next week, work for everyone here. Just, um, is there anyone that wouldn't? <laughs> Nathan, is that the same pool table you whooped me on? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. It's the same one, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, I love playing it.
Yep, if you, there is a question, just let me write it out. Yeah, everyone else can, only one person, Eliza. Yeah, no problem, Eliza. Well, I'll, I'll, because you've come today and you've worked very closely with me, I'll just get you the recording, okay? I'll make sure. But the rule is anyone I give the recording to, um, because they're not here live, um, and do the right thing by me there. So I'm not going to give a recording unless basically you really can't make it live. I just don't want giving this kind of stuff out, you know, to, like I said, I don't want this thing floating around and being given out and all that kind of stuff. Cause I'm really sharing, like I said, some pretty high level stuff with you. So yeah, no problem, Eliza. So I'll trust you. I'm just going to get everyone to do that. So, okay, everyone. Well, brilliant. So, Darren asks, there's so much wealth in the world, are we trying to get it for ourselves or equalize to everyone? Well, oh, it's a good question, Darren. Um, there's only so much wealth in the world. Well, yes and no. If you actually read the science of getting rich, Darren, there's a lot of abundance in the world and it keeps growing and keeps increasing. And there are statistics that show that if the wealth in the world in US dollars was divided fairly among everyone, I think it was some crazy figure like 10 million each everyone would have. It was some ridiculous amount. So I, I believe, for example, that on that one, you're always going to have like some who are richer than others. But the main thing is to get it. I believe that society is getting the trouble and every revolution that you see in history happens because the rich get the money, they keep it for themselves, and they start to get, um, and they don't share it around. They start to hoard it, and then they start to oppress people. So the basic, the real benefit with getting wealth, and what I'd love to see happen, is if you study certain communities, what they did, and I think the Aborigines got it pretty right at one stage, and Hebrew communities and a few others, is that the idea of getting wealth the reason, the basis for socialism in, in very theoretical principle, I can understand it. Because what the basic idea is that wealth should be shared. Now, it, there's, there's no question that the French Revolution happened because the aristocrats lived up royally super rich and left the poor to struggle. The Philippines did that for years, the Marcoses. So people get very resentful when it happens. So... The idea is to get wealthy, but then really use your wealth. Imagine if everyone who was wealthy used their money to help people, open up opportunity for people who were, who were struggling, who started to actually share the wealth. And you'll find inevitably most very wealthy people do that. They share the wealth. They start giving it out and about. Yeah, Fiona, Robin Hood. Yeah, they start sharing it. So I, th I believe that, yeah, by all means, that when you build wealth, live well with your wealth. Use your, you know, live well. Have a nice house. Enjoy the luxury and the abundance of life. Then also use your wealth to make a difference in the lives of other people as well. One of my dreams of the awakening with my awakening work I'm setting up, which is spiritual work where I'm actually teaching about uh, how to manifest things and I'm using principles of science and, um, and proven scientific principles, how your mind and your belief systems can create realities. And my medical doctors like Dr. John Sarno, who actually showed that with his back patients that something like 90% of his back patients cured without any form of treatment, just simply by being mentally reprogrammed by him in his clinic. So this, so my, my dream is to get most, is to get that worldwide. And like the Khan Academy, some of you may have heard, which is a homeschooling, which basically was the dream of Khan was to get maths and science and a whole of this stuff for free education for anyone in the world. So my desire is to get a system of free education for anyone in any country of the world to better themselves, you know, financially in their mindset, learn how to manifest, heal themselves, clear, clear themselves using energy, and um, and do and do you know transform the world basically. And then as well as that, the awakening within will have of course much higher level programs that people do pay very very well for, and they get learn it in business and they learn it in other stuff and they apply it in the areas of life. So my aim is to have kind of two very extremes in now in that where we've got you know no cost free and some very low cost stuff available to help people who really are struggling and then for those who are wealthy to get you know abundant investment so that way the work continues to grow its wealth and you know with higher level people and then as people become abundant they start contributing more to the work and so the more we can do that 
and it evolves from that start to eventually have a kind of school which teaches people how to financially be free in all areas of life, you know, to be financially free in all areas. I'd love, that was one of the dreams of my own boys. That's why my own boys got the chance to homeschool. They got sovereignty. So that rather than when I grew up, I had parents, when I was 15, I was ready to start my own business and got talked out of it by my parents. Completely talked out of it. Told it was too risky. I wanted to invest, was talked out of it. Took me years to undo my programming. So I'm, I've been the opposite, you know, because my boys are naturally quite conservative, James and Edward. And I would push them. And um, as you know, they laugh about it now. We were talking today. And I said, I bet you guys are glad that, you know, I kind of pushed you. And they said, yeah, even though it was hard for them. I remember when James had eczema, very severe eczema of his skin. And he was crying a lot when he was eight or nine and saying how much it hurt. And I said, well, if you keep saying that, it'll stay that way. I said, you can go to a doctor and go on pills or you can believe in the you know, power of, of your mind and the power of Christ, the Christ consciousness to heal you. You know, and I said, what are you going to believe? He said, yeah. He said, I'll believe you. My, and I said, yeah, you're going to believe your father or believe the doctor? He said, believe you. I said, exactly. So I said, as this day starts saying you're healed, ignore your pain. Just give thanks that you're healed of your eczema. And I said, and then we're going to change your diet. Let's be practical. Let's learn about diets, which we did. We were in a couple of months. He was fine. Eczema went away. Yet my brother, of course, the doctor was saying, oh, we've got to get him some special drugs and everything. So I was like, you know, take your drugs and put them up your nose. And I taught them as well that with investment. I said, guys, I said, getting a job is like a drug addiction. So I told them, I said, once you start, it's hard to stop. So I said, once you got yourself a job and you rely on a job for an income, you're screwed. Because I said, it's, it's very hard to break that. It took me years to do it. It was only because I started young. The older you get, the harder it is. So the older you are, but you haven't done that, the harder it is for you to make that break. Realize that you've got major disadvantages. And you're going to have to be strong and to be tough. You're going to have to be ruthless and vicious on that bullying voice in your own mind. Youth don't have those limitations. So I'm determined to teach youth. Because um, when they're 15, 14, 16, they've got no limitations. I mean, Fiona and Darren, your son, Evan, he's got no limitations at all. You know, he, I mean, he, he, he's hungry. He'll be vulnerable. At that age, they've proven that a boy's brain hasn't fully developed all about 21. So up to 21, pretty much, you know, anything you tell them, they're like sponges. That's why William at 18 is already running his own business. He's a healer. He does webinars with me now. He was running his own business at 15 as a busker, going out doing busking and card tricks, ma making money at, at 14, 15. He was on today tonight, um, or, uh, um, like famous, at 16 or 15 or 16 for his business, for basically being a young entrepreneur. You've got James and Edward who have now said no. I said they will never get that drug addiction. They've, they've taught, I mean, Edward is brilliant with emails. He writes most of our emails now, many of them. James does a lot of our YouTube stuff and uploading and helps design a lot of his PowerPoints and things like that. And William basically now has become an expert and he's been studying DNA all day and learning about high-level DNA for tomorrow's webinar to help me a little bit in that. So to help me that and share some higher teachings on epigenetics, because tomorrow I'm running a webinar on DNA activation and scientific findings on that and how you can transform your DNA and improve your brain power and how your mind works. And so you've got a faster mind and more intelligence and, um, and how to even activate yourself for greater connection with higher consciousness. Um, I don't know if anyone's interested in that or registered. Is there anyone here registered for that webinar tomorrow? That free one we're doing tomorrow? I'm just curious. It's 9 o'clock perf time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Duncan's registered, yep. Alive. Yep, Lies interested, Amanda. Yep. Nathan didn't know about it. Yeah, some emails sent out. John can't do it. Um, so yeah, it's, you'll enjoy it. So yeah, Nathan, if you want, um, our team can send you an email tonight so you can register. So... Anyone who wants to, just let me know. Yeah, Nathan's keen, so I'll get um, Edward or that to get, or one of the guys to get it across to you, Nathan. So, and Eliza as well. Yeah, no worries, Joe, definitely. We'll let you know. So, okay, one more, it's exactly two hours now, according to my thing. So, thank you, everyone. 
I'll see you all same time next week.